All right, everybody, we are live again, Dynasty Amir, Search for Huru. And I have the brother, the good brother, Kala Genesis on with us today, B-A-I-O. Um, and tonight's topic is do not bring your misery and your poverty mindset, your uh, uh, struggle fetish to Africa. Leave your, leave your struggle fetish in America, okay? Or wherever you're at, do not bring it to Africa for goodness sake. You know, we don't want to, you just don't, we need to be developing and contributing to Africa, not our, uh, uh, you know, go ahead and take it over. Leave your, leave your, okay, a burden. Yeah, okay. (laughs) A burden. What I'm saying is this we have way too many people who think they're going to philosophize themselves on the continent. You know, for yourself, Africa shit is real. You know what I'm saying? Shit is real over there. Shit is real. It ain't like you can go uh, talk all day on the street corner, 125th, and yeah. then go swipe your go swipe your EBT card. You know what right. I'm saying? Take the sub home and you know hit the movies later and stuff like that. Shut stuff over there got life and death consequences. You know. So when you come over to the continent, come over to the continent. You better have something tangible that the people could gravitate towards. Look at our boy John Cashin. He's been there for 30 years. He's just now getting uh, his uh, his project up and running. You know, and, and people think that, you know, when you go someplace that there's going to be this, uh, um, what's, the, what's the number of coming to America? Where somebody's going to, uh, the, the trumpet horns are going to sing. Get your royal penis clean. and you know, Yeah, yeah, and all that stuff like that, you know. You know that's fantasy. That's that's not the real world. The real world is people. Like I said, shit is real in the real world. You know, people need development. People need money. People need access to education. They need trade. They need healthcare. They need all these things and everything. And one of the things that uh, a lot of Africans tell me is what they want from Black people in America. Says so you guys. You know, they come here and they see the the the, the amazing. Are you, I don't know how it is in the rest of the country like that, but you if you live on the eastern United States, right? All right. You go into the any sort of medical center or any so any sort of professional building, whatever like that, you're gonna see black people. You know, you're gonna see black people. You're gonna see skilled professional black people. It's not like that. It's not like it's not like that in Cali. Uh. Uh-uh. Right, right. In places like that, what, what, what bothers me is. Is places like that are always the representation of Black America? Why is that? You know, places like that are failing, like Chicago and Gary, Indiana. Right. Oh, look at Black America. Detroit. You know? Detroit. Detroit. So, in other words, basically, when you're doing well, you're not Black anymore. You know, or Dinus, right? Because I like I have an African last name. I guess I'm a continental African. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. The collar or not? He wants to be a continental African. He's doing well. He said, "Oh, these are all Africans." You know. There was a picture out a couple of years ago of a Morehouse graduation, right? You mm-hmm. seen that picture that was going around in that? I have not. It's that continental Africans outstripping everybody. Look at graduation. And it was a picture from Morehouse University of African Americans, but they attribute that to uh, uh, Africans. So, in other words, according to everybody right now in the world, the world's thinking, right? And I, this is why I want to say thank you for your show. I want to thank you for the O'Shea show in the Manosphere. Thank you for Phil's show and I don't the Vice show, uh, the Vice show and Afro Synergy. All these people out here, why? For simple reason. When people listen to these brothers, right? That's out there, right? They understand that there's black men that are professional, they got jobs, they got industry, and also got something to say to the world. <coughs> We're not all rappers. We're not all thugs. Right. We're not all uh, megalomaniac, uh, big mouths, a uh, uh, preacher, pimp, uh, 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 black power. We're gonna rise up, Negroes. Rise okay? up. We're, yeah, we're not. We're not all. Have, have, have you seen? Uh, have you seen Prophet Joshua? <laughs> have you? Have you seen? Oh that? no, no, no. I seen the uh, the uh, Nature Boy. He's back. Yeah. You see Nature Boy? Well, four, yeah. wives. Four, four wives. Four wives. He's down to four wives. He's back. You know. And then, and then and nobody what to say and nobody what to say. I'm just like nature boy. Okay, he went to Central, he went to Central America. Please, you know, 
If you don't listen to anything, like, please don't ever go to Africa. You know, because that's exactly what they want. Somebody like him to show up, right? And some scandal to break out, whatever like that. And they say, look, look at this. You know, so we come over there and these people throw that in our face. Oh, man, y'all came over here. And uh, there, was, there was many different failed projects of black people returning to Ghana. Many of them, you know what I'm saying? Many failed uh, back to Africa. I mean, many, you know what I'm saying? People don't know this, right? And what this is doing is Africans are starting to say, you know something? These black people in America are a bunch of clowns. You know what I'm saying? What's, let's not do, why not deal with the Chinese? Do you know we're in a situation where China, let me, this is, let me listen to this and listen to this very, very carefully. I know some of you don't like being black. You know what I'm saying? You can't fool me. You wish you was mixed with red, white. You miss you. you the, the, the idea of mixing the black race with another race thrills you. You wouldn't mind it. You wouldn't like that. But to somebody like me, if you talk about mixing my race and whatnot, I will fall off and knock you upside the head if I saw you in the, in the face. Anyway, I love the African, the black race. That's what I am. That's what I know. And that's all I want to know. The idea of the Chinese coming to Africa, marrying African women, we're not grabbing land. It's to the point now where Africans are starting to rise up and kill these people in places like CAR all over the African continent. How do these people do this? They do this because they know Africans are weak. You know, Africans are weak. We should have been the ones going to Africa. If nothing else is, nothing else is, go over there and find yourself a wife. Right. Go over there and put down some fucking roots. You know? You complain about America. You got a whole vast continent out there of beautiful women. Well, God, God, God. We, 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 we built this country. We've been. Oh, man. The next time I hear somebody talk about built America, years. you know what I'm saying? Oh, you built America. You're still under the under the, the bottom of America. You know what I'm saying? You're still under the heel of America. You you less American than every, anybody that comes off the boat. You know, the white man will come here and will accept anybody besides you. You know, that's a, a funny thing. The white man in America will accept black immigrants over the descendants of slaves. I'm sorry. Right. The descendants of slaves will never be accepted in America because they know if they're not thinking for, if, if they're going to think for you, that you got to be insane to have the same sort of love for America that anybody else does that wasn't a slave. So they're helping you. They're telling you you're a fool. But you don't take a hint. They're saying you would never be an American. Just that you thing. A black person from Nigeria, from England, whatever like that could be American before you can. Why? Because they simply don't trust you. They don't trust the race of people that, that will hate, hate themselves, that doesn't want vengeance, that doesn't want anger, and will willing to so always willing to forgive. Speaking of which, okay, did you hear about that situation? No, oh, I don't want it. Oh, well, you hear about that? I, I, I already know the, uh, with with the, the the black dude, the white lady wouldn't let let him in the apartment building. Yeah, and now this opportunist, right? Right. He's all over the internet talking about. Go, 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 subscribe to my subscribe to my YouTube and my Facebook. And, yo, I, I should have known. <laughs> I should know. I wouldn't even be surprised if this was a setup. You know. <laughs> so he's going around telling everybody, "Forgive her. We we a learning experience. All this kind of freaking nonsense." You know. With the so-called African American, yeah, African American right. is the only group of fools on the planet that does this. You know, he's telling you, <laughs> do you does he understand that it wasn't just about him? That had it been the right situation, the right situation, a cops could have came to that door blazing. She could have went to there and said, Yeah, I think he had a gun. And that's all it would take. Right. The cops come rolling up there. Do you understand? Now, unless it was all a setup. Hey, hey, he, he, would, he, would, he, would, he would straight into forgive, 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 forgive. Because he's trying to he, he's trying to reach I out to meet that, with her. Uh, I want to meet with her. That that that, that Negro. Uh, 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 let's all get along. It's too much before election. We can't have black people angry. So let's let's get out there and get the people out to the polls and you know whatever. You know we never hear about these Democrats or whatever liberals until there's election time. You know I I, I said that right after 2016. I said, wow, wow, Donald Trump lost. I said, you think the Democrats would do some reflection and say, what, what, what can we do to bring the black vote back in? You know, two years they had, did they? No. But instead, they want to browbeat us for not showing up. Only we had a 60% right. voter turnout. 
You know, they want to beat us down. What's the difference between them and a slave master with a whip? You know, telling you get out there and vote. What? Carl, you want to you you want to uh, answer uh, you you want to address a uh, comment in the chat room real quick? I think. It's go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, from Danny's world, the title is misleading based on the assumption that most African Americans are poor and in misery, which is far from the truth. Sounds like something a European would say to blacks coming to. Him. Okay, let's say like okay, okay, that's what I'm talking about. I don't think he understood the whole point. Black people in America are not poor. You know what I'm saying? And miserable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the black people that tend to go to Africa tend to be our. You know what I'm saying? That? Somehow, for some way, the black people that got nothing going for themselves in America always end up themselves in Africa. You know, and that gives the perception that we ain't doing nothing without with, with the opportunity we have in America. You know, why they said, why can't you guys be like the white Americans who come here and you guys are head of banks and y'all bring business and investment? We can do that, but. The bottom line is the black people in America, you know, are comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Are comfortable. How do you make Africa attractive? Like I said, you know, the BAL group is, is uh, going to Rwanda in uh, in, in uh, February. If you guys want to, you know, join the BAIO group in, uh, uh, in uh, Rwanda, hopefully I can join it. You know what I'm saying? I got something else going on at the time. But hopefully we're all going to go as a group in Rwanda and you know, start making BAL trips to different African countries and you know, meeting certain people. Let's talk. Let's bring, let's build the bridges between professionals. You know, join our social network site. Build the bridges and everything. Let's let the intellectuals talk. You know, professional. Let me give you an example. I had I was at a party Saturday night, right? I was at a party Saturday night. It was just any old party. Mm -hmm. Some of us professionals like open enrollment for Medicare started today. Okay, so we had a little pep rally. We had drinks. We had wings. Everything. All black people. There's nothing more stimulating than being around top black professionals in the medical field and everything and you sitting back talking about the industry and everything like that i want if you don't know that experience and all you know is punching a clock and just being miserable and everything and what you do for life and everything i'm sorry but get a new career being around black professionals and every, people have been in the business and uh at the top of their game managed in management upper management and uh people as in i mean being around just just the scope of conversation that you're having with these black professionals you forget you're like oh wow you know we can do anything we have black people that can do anything in every field you know what i'm saying science math technology industry everything and the whole idea is to bring these people together and let's show the world what we can do if you think black america is gary indiana chicago st louis now i'm not going to diss these places look there's many reasons. Wisconsin, the worst, you know. Um, uh, what's it called? Milwaukee. I mean, I'm sorry. These these places are just gone. But black people love these places. You know, you can't tell me. Yeah, I ain't never leaving Milwaukee. Okay, well, fine. Bottom line is this: that is not black misery gets most of the headlines. You know, and then when they say, "Well, call it, man," I thought you were national. All right, I, this is what I'm saying: the nationalist movement is now hijacking black success we've let the coons the lib neoliberals the conservatives own black america success too long we are here to uh hijack and identify with the black success because we understand that until you basically reach out to the middle class black people the successful black people the educated black people the black people businesses money and connections in this world we're never going to go any place and too much too much you know too much of the so-called national movement have been about battering and uh objectifying and, and uh demonizing that group of black people the very people you need the very people that countries like uh, ghana the countries like angola want when they see a black woman they don't understand that he may have went to harvard or yale or princeton and everything like that all they see is that somebody looks like them and he could come to the continent it's like we have a brother down there that moved his family in botswana that owns an it but is doing really well Wow. You don't know where his background. His background could have been he went to an all-white school, whatever like that. But the bottom line, when you see his pictures of him, a, a good a, a blog to look at is African Americans in Africa of my sister, um uh sister that uh that lives in Namibia, you know. Oh she, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Caitlin Sutton, Caitlin Sutton. Yeah. You know, she does she does a good blog of African Americans who are successfully living on the continent, you know, who are successfully. Not people live going there and 
and uh, getting in a mud hut and uh, and uh, smoking their ganja and you know and sipping on some forties private stock and whatnot. So I'm, like, I'm in the motherland, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Colin, where they at? Where they at? In the mud hut. <laughs> <laughs> see, I got to see. I live off the grid and whatnot. You know, saying you got to do generator in the back and whatnot. You know, you know, doing Wi Fi. What not? Oh, I got a little generator in the back and whatnot. We don't need that, folks. You know, we, we don't need that. You know, we need the people stepping forward that got, you got that got the skills. We need leadership. You know, to build this global uh, infrastructure, which I mean, we need leadership. We need people that's not afraid to step up and stand up and be accounted for and be a leader. You know, we need leadership, you know? And uh, so, um, like I said, that, that situation with the a girl in, uh, in uh, St. Louis, a bad situation. Yeah. But that just shows you, but just shows you what exactly what we're up against. Now, uh, the Fox News is going to probably pick this guy up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They're gonna parade him all over, but you know, um, you know, they'll they'll pick him up for the uh the stereotypical. See the see the left, the left wanted him to make it a racist situation. See the left, they wanted a teachable, teachable moment. You know, and speaking of which, you see they they fired Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson, Kevin Jackson. Oh, he was a chief coon on Fox News. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used to bang him on Blog Talk Radio years ago. Block talk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was a block talk. You were OG college citizen. Yeah, talk. yeah, man. People, I got people like uh, Tory and he's like, we're talking to him now. now. His show, uh, his uh, uh on his, his chat on uh, on Facebook, it was like, yeah. And also the conference call we had the other night, and like Tory, Tory's like my, one of my first listeners. That was ten years ago. I was like, geez, time goes by quick, you know. And the time goes by quick. Ten freaking years ago. I was started on Blog Talk Radio, and I got people still like follow me. And I'm like, wow. But like I said, I never have any desire to be famous or, or like that. I'll leave that to Dynas. I'll leave that to O'Shea. I'll leave that to people. <laughs> all I want, all I want, is my voice and my message to get out there. there you you know what I'm saying I'll let everybody else get get the accolades and all the stuff like that. I don't want it. All I want is the support and the legitimacy, uh, the, the the rightfully legitimate legitimacy of a nationalist movement. Yeah, you know, I think it's high time. I seen a video, I seen the thing the other day where 50 Cent was on MSNBC. Well, yeah, one, you know, one of the guy that always plays rap music in his uh, 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 MSNBC show. He's always I, playing rap music. Whatever. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I barely watch cable TV. Bro. Yeah, but anyway, he had 50 Cent up there giving political analysis, you no. know? And I'm saying to myself, okay, 50, you got a good show, stars. Number one album in the club, uh, in the mm -hmm. club, uh, and stuff like that. I mean, okay, he he, he makes money, vibing water, just that you know thing, right? But he's on the show, and they're asking him about Donald Trump, Kanye, and everything like that. And my point about him is this: this is what's going on. This is what's going on in a nutshell. You know, he they, uh, what they're doing is this: if you are an entertainer, or you're anybody as an entertainer. You are basically, they are basically black. They want to make sure that you, uh, they know where you stand as far as Donald Trump. Not because they really care about you. It's just the fact of the matter is this. If you are a black entertainer, if you want to be invited to the red carpet parties and stuff like that, really, it's really sad to tell you the truth. You know, it's, I mean, think about it. It's really sad. You got all that money, right? You got all that money, but you probably be suicidal if you don't get an uh, after party, you think about it. If you don't get invited to one award show, you are that friggin' sad. It, it, it's that sad. You know, you can't just say, like a white man says, you know, like Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. Right. You know, if there's no part, if I don't show up there, there's no party. Let's see. Uh, shout out, shout out to uh, Kofi O. Newton for the uh, super chat. Um, I got a, got a couple super, super chat questions. Uh, I'll ask them both, and then you could um, address them. Okay, uh, good. Uh, first one, does Kanye West need to be in Africa? Second question is, Ghana's government has announced modernization plans for Accra, Accra and other cities and given the job to Dr. Lou Thai Kerr, master planner of Singapore. I know you're very big on Singapore, uh, Kala, uh, to take the job. What's Kala's view on that? I'm all for it. Okay. Uh, uh, 
first of all, before we can have modernization, you have to have modernization of land laws. Singapore's land laws are based on uh, like the Western uh, model, which is based on the Magna Carta, which is people can own, individual people have the right to own space, own private property. And it's based on that. You know, in other words, basically, you don't have to be a citizen to own private property in the nation. You can just own property and it's yours as real estate. If you have a deed title to it, this, that, and the other thing. That's what the whole banking and mortgage system and our asset system is based on. You know, that's an asset. You own property. You can't take that away. The only people that take that away is the state which has eminent domain. Okay? That's the system you have in Singapore. How are they going to do that in Ghana? I've heard this project before. They have many different development schemes in Ghana and stuff like that. They all go work because what you need ultimately, right, is you need people to buy those properties. Right. If you have a majority of people living in poverty, right, living in poverty, and you have, you've seen some of those, the, pro, the prices in Ghana, those skyrocketed prices in Ghana, a country that had doesn't have proper roads, sanitation, everything, and property still going for like $100,000, you know, they don't have a, a, a adequate real estate back assessed market. So therefore, therefore, when real estate is developed, right, because you have one, or let's say you have a real estate that's developed, one road is developed, because it's few, the price elevates. But if you had a, a, a massive numbers of land that, that had infrastructure that was connected to the grid and everything, the prices of land would go down, you know, and then you have a stabilized market. But at the same time, you need families buying houses and buying properties at a rate which basically could justify that. Who are these people are going to uh, um, uh, uh, going to live in these properties? You know, where are the jobs? Where are the jobs at in Ghana? Where's the industrial jobs? You know, where are the industrial jobs? Hmm. I said this the other day, right? I said this the other day. Uh, you know, the article, uh, look, I, I knew this, uh, do this, do this. So I listened to this article online the other day. It said that in Ghana, and uh, a lot of countries in Africa, it's the Chinese. You know, China, I think it was. I think it was your, your your thing when you was in uh, Ivory Coast. Well, you know? uh, 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 the Chinese are the ones that do the shipping and the importing and the exporting. You know, yeah, well, well, it's not. It's not. It's not done by us. No. Yeah, it's done by the Chinese. That right there, not being able to control, not having the centralized shipping, shipping and uh, logistics infrastructure, right? That's like almost like 30 to 40 percent of your revenue right there. If you don't control that and you have the, you're reliant on other people's time schedule where they can supply you with a ship, when they can ship stuff like that. And you don't have your own shipping because, you know, one, you can't afford a ship or two, you can't even have a ship on contract. You can't even contract a ship. What if Ghana and uh, Nigeria got together and said, we're going to contract uh, Acme shipping out of China to ship goods back and forth between uh, 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 Ghana and Nigeria and Cameroon and all these, on the whole Gulf area of West Africa, right? But it would take it would have to take all those governments together. Say, okay, we want a, sh a synchronized shipping platform. What you'll have is the shipping rates will go down. You know, what I'm saying it'll, it'll, it'll increase trade in between these two countries. Nigeria can ship goods to uh, whatever Ghana has excess of. They can ship to Nigeria. Whatever Nigeria has excess of, they can ship to Ghana. You will create millionaires overnight, new millionaires overnight. And that booming uh, booming economy will create a middle, a middle class. Real, real quick, uh, somebody somebody brought, brought up a uh, great point. In fact, shout out to everybody in the chat room. Please hit that like button as you come to the chat room. We have 176 people watching, only 58 likes. Please hit that like button. Um, the purpose of the these land laws um, you know, especially in Ghana, as far as you can't own, it's, it's a it's a lease state, not a freehold state. Uh, right. because they didn't want uh, non-Ghanaians buying up all the land. Uh, what, what what are your thoughts on that? Okay, yeah. my whole thing is this. Now, at the same time, uh, you see what's going on in China, the Chinese are, are uh, the Chinese don't care about owning the land, but they're up in northern Ghana illegally mining. They just want the gold out of there, right? The only per people that's hurting are, are maybe a Nigerian businessman who might be a property developer, uh, somebody from the Ivory Coast that might be a property developer. The only people that's going to hurt really is another African. You know what I'm saying? 
Because mm-hmm. all the whole, you know, you don't have the, uh, these foreigners trying to buy up land. That's the, that's that's a part. It's all about uh, them practicing tribalism and this uh, this nonsense about spirituality and the land possesses spirits and my, that's my ancestors. All this stuff, all this backward stuff that's gonna keep Africa forever underdeveloped. The only people that hurt, that 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 uh, that Africans that that hurts this hurts is fellow Africans and particularly African Americans. You know who might want to buy land or whatever like that. It's not going to hurt foreigners because when it comes down to it, no matter what kind of spirit you think that land has in it, if they say they if they found a, a, a bauxite like Carmen and Krumar did, guess what? That there's going to be uh, uh, bulldozers over over there taking that bauxite <laughs> out. You're you know, <laughs> so people go back and forth for me, but you got to check with the elder and the spirits and. All stuff like that. Let there be some gold on that land. You know what I'm saying? Right. And see how fast that goes out the door. Oh, they, the only people that buy that stuff is the so-called African Americans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so the bottom line is, just like you, just like you can't be a sucker when you come to New York. The first thing they tell you is, don't be a sucker. Mm-hmm. Africans got game like you don't believe. You know what I'm saying? They got game like you don't believe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a fool. You know, and that's what they think of us. We're just a bunch of fools. We're ignorant. We're stupid. We're gullible. You know, we believe anything they say. So, yeah, somebody, you know, somebody said Af- ancestral land should not be sold. Yeah, I was going to read that. What are your thoughts on I that? I don't know what the hell. That, well, first of all, what does he mean should not be sold? You know, ancestral land should be sold. You know, I, I, I don't, I, I mean, some people don't even know what they're talking about, you know. Respect African traditionals. Okay. Well, how come? Well, why don't you tell Africans to respect African traditions? You know, what I'm saying that's the first thing you want to do. Tell Africans is uh, uh, that what's up with Rwanda? Everything is good with Rwanda. Rwanda is a model country. And let me tell you something right now, right? They said this, they call this the it's a success test or the Singapore test, the Israel test, and now the uh, Rwanda test, right? Ask a person what they think about a successful nation. And I'll tell you everything about that person right there. You say Singapore. Well, uh, uh, Lee Kuan Yew was a dictator. Uh, 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 Singapore is definitely the people not happy. Uh, blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about uh, Israel? Well, you know, uh, blah, blah, uh, the, the, the Palestinians, uh, blah, 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 blah. What do you think about Rwanda? Oh, no, see, Paul Pagani, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know the Congo and other. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, let's say another successful country. What do you think about Norway? I don't know much about them, but they're successful. Blah 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 blah. Oh, what do you think about Australia? All oh, the indigenous people of Australia. Blah 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 blah. The bottom line is this: people do not like people. Negative people do not like successful nations. Right. When you got miserable people flocking to your country, woe unto you! Beware. You know what I'm saying? Woe unto you, beware. When you got these misery merchants who want to send merchants. on the African continent. Uh, when they wanted to send on the African continent because that's what happened in South Africa, that's what's happening in Ghana. All these countries are turning into a hell holes, you know, even Liberia when that because you got these misery merchants returning from the United States who got no ideas, no money, no insight, no anything other than bitching and complaining and Causing strife, causing all this kind of nonsense, and this is why countries are a uh, uh, thing. I'm almost scared to approach African countries and talk about African Americans. Why? Because they say, "Well, damn, man, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know." And, uh, and I remember uh, you watched the show Black Without Borders, right? Yeah, right. right. Mm-hmm. What, yeah, so one, right. One, 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 one good thing about that show was it would show black people successful in South Africa. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, not everybody is going to be successful. Not everybody's going to be successful. But you've got to have those sort of black people that can go there and build something as leadership, you know, that everybody else can gravitate towards. And so, uh, um, so this is what this is what uh, we had in South Africa, Black Without Borders. When people saw Black Without Borders, that's what that's what led us up to what we, where we are right now. You know, it hasn't been fast enough, right? Because to be perfectly honest with you, right, uh, until the internet came along, right, there was nothing, Dynasty, there was nothing connecting 
us with Africa. We were completely severed off. The only thing we had connected to Africa was every once in a while Nelson Mandela would make a speech. And, and if we got uh, half of the story from the New York Times or Time Magazine, that was it, you know? Oh, we knew something about that. Other than that, there was nobody reporting Africa. There was just one uh, black new underground newspaper, uh, one black, it was a newspaper, right, that had an international section. You know, and I used to always go in, in, in this, this black newspaper, and, and the only place I could get it from is, is one library, right? And I used to remember back in the days, this was back in the 90s, right? I used to remember I used to take the bus to this uh, library that would have it, right? And I would read the, uh, every week it would come out. It would come out. It was weekly. And all of a sudden, uh, the back page of the thing was international. And I'd find out what's going on on uh, the Congo, what's going on, this, that, and the other thing. I was fiending for that paper. I'd be like, okay, one more bus. I'd be running up to the library. What's going on? What's going on in the continent? You know what I'm saying? That was back 20 something years ago. What's going on in the continent? And then at the Charlotte Institute, I used to pick up a lot of stuff that was going on. I was well versed in what's going on in Nigeria because I had a lot of uh, uh, literature about the current political the, the, the situation in Nigeria, you know, and a, a couple of things. But Nigeria, because uh, the Charlotte Institute was battling against the World Bank and the IMF when they were trying to destroy Nigeria in the 90s. So I kept mm -hmm. up with that. But uh, for the most part, you didn't have anything connecting Black America and Africa and everything. Ebony Magazine, somewhat. Ebony Magazine, 1989, did a two-part series on Nigeria. And no, no, not 1989, it was 1990. It was a two-part series on Nigeria, two parts. And that basically was that's, that kicked something going on. And then when the Mandela uh, became president, Essence Magazine went there, uh, uh, Emerge Magazine went there. And Botswana in the in 93, Emerge Magazine went to uh, Botswana and was like showcasing a success story. It's mm -hmm. an African success story. That was 1993. But for the most part, uh, uh, the final call, yeah, Nature Visit on Final Call uh, did a lot, had an international section, which they basically talked about a lot of stuff that was going on on the continent. You know? So we were basically, uh, besides these little outlets right here, I saw there was a need for people knowing what's going on on the continent. As more and more people started realizing what's going on in the continent, you had more educated black people and more black people with means and money saying, you know, I think I could take up an opportunity. And there's a lot of African Americans who are living on the continent, but they live quietly. You know, they're not out there with bullhorns and uh, yeah, uh, uh, fight the power and all stuff like that. It's quietly building businesses and building networks on the continent. You know, and they're out there. You know, they're out there, but we don't, we, a lot of us see them. There's some of them in the BAIO and stuff like that. They keep abreast with us, but a lot of them want to keep a low profile because it's very tenuous. Their position is very tenuous because let's be honest with you. When you're living on the continent, some of your partners and all stuff like that, it's not everything is black power and pan Africanism. Some of your partners may be Caucasian, European, and you got to do what you got to do to get the deals done. You know what I'm saying? And so we understand that. You know, So we want to be that sort of organization where we understand people have to do what they have to do to uh, dig, you know, you know, you want to uh, somebody hope you can't say there's a lot of people clearly don't know college desert guys. This is actually the improved version. What the hell is he talking? Why is everybody else coming at me sideways and whatnot? You know, <laughs> God, my fan club, <laughs> Kala Thanos, my fan club, man. What, what would I do without him? <laughs> but, uh, hey. We're, we're, we're gonna were we gonna speak on the um uh do you want to speak on the Kanye going to Africa situation or oh yeah 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 like, like I said uh don't be a sucker you know what I'm saying right. Museveni is using Kanye same thing with the president of Ghana and everything Kanye Kanye did good he should have left it at Trump you know I can deal with that when you see when you start going to the African continent then I got something to say. He just basically elevated Museveni, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A, 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 a rogue thug who basically, basically almost killed Bobby Wine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And uh, 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 changed the constitution. You should have right they had this parliament, right? Right. The whole parliament broke down into an outright riot because this fool changed the constitution to allow himself to run for president again, you know? The guy has no years. Uganda has an 86% on the youth unemployment rate. Any place else on this earth right here, yeah, they'd they, they be burning down the, the city. You know right. what I'm saying? But his military is brutally putting down people. Same thing is going on in Congo right now. 
in parts of Angola and everything. All the stuff is brutality is going on. It is not one African country, except for Rwanda for the most part, that's not uh, using the military to suppress the people. And like I said, and we basically, I'm not going to sit by and and, and, uh, and and let this stuff happen. Everything. I must keep saying it. You know, I, like I said, I'm going to keep saying it. I must keep exposing the truth. Because why? Because as more people from America start going to the continent, if you think you're going to be immune to the same violence that's on it, you are sadly mistaken. That's another thing. We think that we're going to go to the continent and we're going to, if somehow uh, the bullets or whatever like that that might break down is not going to affect us. You have to know uh, the. Uh, well, yeah, but the, the but the violence isn't as bad or not. I mean, not even close. Oh, to no, 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 no. I'm, hey, not, I'm hey. not saying bad, but but like it's the whole thing is. Uh, my 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 whole thing is is like I tell people that I just found this, this article, and you know how much I love Angola, right? All right. And I just found out that uh, like I said, one of my partners in Angola is in jail. I know I know that I'm trying to communicate backwards, but the thing is, the Angola wants to be this modern country in Africa, right? All right. right? Look just very carefully. Angola has a problem with migrants coming from from the Congo, you know. They have a problem with my illegal migrants coming from the Congo, right? And so when these people, these migrants come from the Congo, a lot of them are doing illegal mining. They're, they're just sketching out a living. They're just putting up shanty towns and everything like that. And so instead of the uh, the government repatriating them back to their countries, you know, their, their governments are, are they're, they're being accused now of brutally killing and torturing these Congolese and terrorize them to flee back across the border. Mm -hmm. You know? You know, why? Because they don't want to, you know, they, you know, they just don't want to deal with these the the you know the influx of poor in their country. They just don't want to do it. And this is happening all over the continent. You know, people they uh <coughs> have military power, they have military might, and there's nothing that can stop them. You know, we are we're, we're echoing. Oh, okay, let me uh, echo. Uh, hold on, let me let me hold on one second. Let me, uh, Carl, you, you go ahead, Carl. Oh yeah, okay. So my point, my point, my point of, of the matter is, when we go, when we go to the continent, we have to be sure about our position. And what we are, and what we, and we have to be able to defend ourselves and protect our life and everything like that, you know. And we have to be, we have to go over there with the idea, with tell, make it clear, this is what we're going, this is what we can build, this is what we're capable of, this is what we're capable of. And once that happens and everything, people know that we can build medical systems, we can build infrastructure, we can build IT systems, we can build. Whatever you want to build, we could build. You know, we could build. We have the people that could build. If the right environment is there, we could do whatever the Chinese do, pretty much. You know, we could do everything, you know, and we could bring those, those things to bear. Then you're in the position of, okay, you know, you could say what you want, but you cannot go over to the continent and, uh, and not contribute. And I always tell people all the time, I said, when you travel to the continent, what kind of insurance do you carry? I don't know about that. Do you understand that? If you, God forbid, go there and you get, let's say you get bitten by a, uh, uh, and people don't realize this, Africa, West Africa has deadly snakes. You know, you get bitten by a snake and they got to rush you to ER and trauma unit, right? That costs money. You know, the hospital's on the line, bill for that. And, uh, okay, you're on the pl next plane. And uh, how do you get that? How, how do you pay that bill off? How do you pay that hospital bill off? Did you bring in insurance? No. I don't think I don't think they. Uh, if you uh, have you ever had a situation, Dinah, where uh, you have seen somebody basically uh, skip out on a medical bill in Africa? I I don't know. Some, some people don't talk about, but I, the reason why I know about this topic is because I know in uh, uh, in Liberia, it's hard for even a person who lives there to see a doctor. Doctors don't get paid. Nurses are uncaring and completely unprofessional. JFK Memorial Hospital in Liberia, they said it's a death trap, you know? And so I'm saying to myself, you know, people don't think about that when they, uh, 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 
when they when they talk about going overseas, especially to a developing country. You know, what, what, okay, well, what kind of medical insurance are you carrying? What if you die over there? You heard about that guy that uh that used to do the uh, shows for Brazil, uh, the uh, black men. Charles, Charles uh Charles Merchant, he passed. Did, did. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Do you know that he died there, right? He had no insurance, right? Yeah, there was a there was, there was there was a GoFundMe to get him up there. There was a GoFundMe to get him up there. You, you see what I'm talking about? People don't think about these things when they say, Oh, yeah, I'm going to the continent, I'm going here, I'm traveling here, and everything like that. You know? Now I'm sure if it was a European country, a rich European country. They probably would have funded him his body being transferred back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but I think I think you should, everyone should have a life insurance. You the minimum that has nothing to do with doing Africa or not. You should have. Yeah, a right. You should have a uh, uh, what you call it? Yeah, uh, you should have a life insurance policy, and you should have travelers insurance policy. You can travelers insurance is a period certain. Let's say you want to go for ninety days, you can get a ninety day policy. When you, when you depart, it starts the day you depart and the day you land. When your flight, that's the indemn, that's the indemnity of the uh, the span of the uh, uh, the term of the uh, policy. It's a term policy, you know, it's a term, and have different indemnities of uh, lose a finger, lose this, lose a limb, whatever like that, and cash payout and stuff like that. But it's good to have, you know, you know, good to have if you are uh, uh, traveling. And people don't think about that because. The bottom line is this, but those African countries think about that stuff. Because I used to be upset, you know. Um, like, Real quick, um, so, so, somebody, um, somebody brought up Charles. His name is Charles. Was it Merchant or Tyler? In the, in Tyler, Britain. I thought it was Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. Tyler. But but he he brought up something. Um, he said, "And rest in peace." And we don't want to speak ill on a guy, and he's passed away. Yeah. But he said Charles Tyler was broke. I liked his videos, but dude wasn't building much there. What we got to understand about these black men that go to Brazil and Dominican, it's not about building. It's about right. chasing uh, exotic hoes. Right. Use my language. Exotic. Yeah. Um, but using the pretense. Sex. But yeah. using the pretense of building and I'm connected with the culture and everything. You know, you know, it don't work like that. You know, you know, it don't work like that. You come to a country, you should you, you should be able to handle business first. Business comes before anything, you know, and that's that. That's just being a man. You know, you, now I'm not trying to sound sexist or anything like that, right? Right? But it's all right for women, like Don Coleone said to his son. It's all right like for women to be foolish and emotional, but men have to always be strong. We have to all be rational and think about this stuff like that, because ultimately you're responsible for anything that goes on. Men have to step up and be the protector and builder and and and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, those men, women can't be leaders too. You got alpha women out there too. I, I'm not taking that away. But ultimately, all men have to be like that. You know, you cannot think with your friggin' the head between your legs when you're making a friggin' decision. You know, if you're talking about going to the continent, just so I want to go over there and chill. And I don't want to friggin' chill with you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And when I, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, yo, I, I got enough people in the world I chill with. I got tons of friends and family and everything. I don't want to chill with nobody. How, how about that? I don't want to drink with you, whatever like that. I want to build something. You know what I'm saying? You want to start a business together? Fine. Let's talk about that. You know? But I don't want to be nobody's friend. So, so the bottom line is this. We have to, and then we have to have that attitude. You know, that wards off the weirdos and idiots that keep uh, uh, finding themselves in our groups. Why? Because, you no, know why? Because we are being challenged right now. This thing with China and all these things is real. And if you think just because we are the same color and race that ultimately that's going to uh, pan out and, and, the, and, the, and the right things are going to see itself in, you, you're sadly mistaken. You are sadly freaking mistaken. If you think is, we're just going to sit in America, oh, Africa will be fine, everything, the Chinese are moving in. And it won't be the same thing. You have more and more mixed race Chinese people, uh, Africans and Chinese being born. You know, unlike other people, other races where people are mixed, and I'm not trying to sound racist and everything like that. I am not a racist. I am not a racist. And I love uh, mixed race people. I love them. They're my fellow human beings. 
but at the same time, I don't put them up on high. You know, when people are mixed in every other culture, they're pushed to the side. They're marginal. You can be part of society, but you ain't the main thing. You ain't the main attraction. And when it comes to black people, and I don't know if you, did you see uh, uh, O'Shea's show last night? Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, I, I did not see it, but somebody told oh me. Oh, my God. It, it was oh wild. But I didn't see. Yo, it. It listen, was, listen. It was, I'm guessing Rashida probably was was on there. Yo, problem. Rashida is no joke. She said this one like that light skin chick up with the cold. She oh, um, I said I, I typed in the chat room. I was gonna instigate herself, but she's gonna light her ass up. <laughs> Good. But the bottom line is this: you came away with this idea that colorism and this worship of color and race. And this want to be mixed and also that that has to die in black America. That has to die. This idea that every time somebody is mixed race, whatever like that, we got to worship them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We got to worship them. We got to put them on the same thing. You, 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 you part of the team. Or you got what? 5% black blood in you? Oh, come on to the table. You know, sit down at the table. Sit down and have lunch. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? I know you're only 5% black and whatnot. But uh, yeah, but, but, but you, but, but that's all right. No, 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 no. We have to get back to the fact that if you ain't 100% black or not, step your ass and put your ass back in the back of the line. This is serious business here. This is serious business here. Our the, our race is is in jeopardy of being exterminated and being extinct. And you are nothing without your race. I don't care about. The spirituality and stuff like that. It's all about your color, your race, and your nappy head. That's what we are. That's who we are. You know what I'm saying? That's what identifies us. Our hair, our skin, our lips, you know, all the stuff like that it makes you an African. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. And if we lose that identity and whatnot, we've lost. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm, I'm sick of, uh, you know, people beating around the bush and, and uh, stuff like this and People are part-time black people and uh, are, are, are part-time nationalists and part. No, if this stuff is real or it's not. Real is the fact that our asses belong to Africa. You know what I'm saying black America right now. What you see in black America, you might have to put a yellow tape around black America. But what you see is a crime scene. The fact that we even did this good in America, and America is a crime scene. You know what I'm saying America is a crime scene around black America. That's a crime scene. We should not be here right now. You know what I'm saying? We should not be here right now. We should have a land, a nation of our own. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to die fighting for that. You know what I'm saying? And all the African people say, well, uh, Gala, are, are you telling me that you want some land of your own? Yes. Why? Because I was uprooted from the land that we came from. So it's only fitting that we justice will say that we want something for ourselves. That's just justice. Other than that, you telling me that we got to linger in America? That's another thing. I'm getting sick and tired of, you know? Okay, African Americans, you are the sixth region of the African Union. No, 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 because it's not African American. It's African American. You're African American. You're the African American. And we're proud of our African American. Now, um, uh, 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 people in the African Union, what, what kind of votes do we? Oh no, no, we have Israel on here as an advisory board. We're begging Morocco to come here. The Egyptian president uh, leaders call us all black dogs. We're still trying to get them on here and everything. We don't want Haiti and everything. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is this: since you're African American, we'll make you a sixth region. You don't have any vote, no say so. Only when we get in trouble with the West or the European Union, we expect you all to be our barking dogs in America. Think about it. They say, some people say, nah, Kala, Africans wouldn't be that devious and, uh, and uh, like that. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? The biggest oppressor of African youth, you know what I'm saying, are African leaders. Pro Pro Professor Lumumba said that. The biggest, the jealousy of the older generation who don't want to give up their power and everything, their connection to the colonial world, everything that was handed to them at post-colonial, these people have to die. They have to go. 
then the younger generation Africans are so frustrated they got to climb on boats and leave to, for Europe. See, I'm telling it like it is. I'm not telling you any fairy tales. College Genesis tells it like it is. I don't tell you. I don't. I don't uh, uh, come to, to peel apples with a little little uh, uh, a little switchblade. I take a freaking double bladed axe and I cut the damn apple tree down and slice it up in pieces. That's what I do. Bottom line is this: the same thing in America. Same thing like this. The the microphone and the uh, cameras are always shining in some Negro's face, who the white man, the white media still has a, 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 a thing for them because they control the media. But you notice how these same people, you never see them online. You'll never see them online. You have uh, what's our what's our two chunky friends, uh, Roland Martin and uh, and uh, uh, Steve uh, uh, Jason Whitlock, right? They're yeah, having a big debate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's gonna be uh, the 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 biggest. I hate saying the word coon. Uh, coon yeah, and no, I hate saying it. Coon uh, okay, be... but the thing is, what are they gonna debate about? You know, why are white or re uh, subs when they order uh, vanilla or chocolate uh, ice cream, strawberry? I mean, cherry or strawberries on the cheesecake? What the heck are these two guys gonna debate about? Hey, are, they, are, we, are we gonna fry the chicken? Are we gonna uh, or bacon. Bacon. Yeah, or fried or baked. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think Roland Martin will go to the fried. Jason Woodlock is like a baked chicken type of brother. Yeah, he a baked chicken. You know? you know? You know? It's ridiculous. You know? It's ridiculous. You know? It's it's, it's just utterly ridiculous. And uh, 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 let me talk about uh, uh, Kanye. Okay? Let me talk about Kanye. And people are like, oh, here we go. You support Kanye. No, I don't. But I do support one thing. I believe a man, a man, a real man has a right to his opinions. May not always agree with him. He has a right to his opinion. I, I can't get over how they're trying to boy and son Kanye West, right? Right. Michael Eric Dyson says, well, Kanye's a fool, bye, 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 bye. He's oh, let's, 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 talk about, let's talk about Michael Eric Dyson. Dyson. It's time for us to bury this. So, so Michael, um, what's the show he's on with the with the racist Jewish guy that was saying nigga and talking all greasy about black? Oh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, Bill Maher? Bill Maher. Mm -hmm. So now, now Michael expects us to to boycott and and, and let Kanye go. Because he's hanging out with the racists in the White House, but he was, Bill, but he was making all types of excuses and explaining for Bill Maher just so right, he could right, get right, a right. job on his show. Just so he could get a spot. I invite Michael Eric Dyson on the show. Michael Eric Dyson is nothing but a mutt, mulatto. We're not confused, Negro. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, Michael Eric Dyson came on the scene as a neoliberal. He comes up there. He came on the scene attacking Bill Cosby and defending gangster rappers instead of. And he was going to be the one that defended Pookies and Ray Rays, you know? Yeah, he'd be, he he be killing me with that. Uh, well, you know, brother, see, on the east side of the LBC, oh, yeah, brother, well, see, that's how we're going to get our uh, justice through the east, you know, with the rap lyrics. And it's just, oh, shut up. He's a cornball. He's a cornball. And, and anyway, he comes see, up on the thing. Gonna, see, brother, see, how we going to, see, 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 Michael Eric Dyson, brother, see, how we going to get our justice, brother, is we got to take the east side of the LBC <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> with the war G. brother. Chase, he, 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 the internet, because the internet is his worst enemy, because I was tearing him up for years. I wrote this blog called Revenge of the Nerds, right? And I ate him to pieces. That was back in 2008. I got to start putting my, some of my old blogs back up there so people can see it. You know, I didn't just come out of nowhere. Anyway, so anyway, uh, Michael A. Dyson went up defending Lil Wayne, David Bannon. Remember David, how bad David Bannon used to be with the gangster rap lyrics and all that? He appeared in Congress with uh, with David Bannon. And it was, I think it was Bobby Rush who said, look, man, you know, you guys, I appreciate what you're doing. He said, but what your music you're talking about is, is the dregs of freaking society. I'm like, wow. So Michael L. Jackson looked at him like, look freaking stupid. You're up there talking about, oh, yeah, uh, uh, defending rap lyrics and everything. The rap lyrics at the time, my brother, was not even political. These guys were nothing political. It was all about getting money, getting paid, getting uh, murdering, killing, and all sorts of that. And this guy, was, Michael L. Jackson, was defending it. 
misogyny, rape, you know, selling drugs and drugging women, all the stuff like this. Michael Eric Dyson co-signed, you know? And then he said, he, he gives up and says, we can't abandon our gay brothers and sisters. I was like, what the hell is this nigga talking about? Gay brothers and sisters? They're part of the struggle now, too, and all this kind of stuff like that. And then he starts uh, uh, attacking the Nation of Islam. Uh, Michael Eric Dyson attacking the Nation of Islam, attacking black patriarchy. You know what I'm saying? His main target was Bill Cosby. You know, and he was, uh, Michael Dyson is one of the main reasons why Bill Cosby felt, because he would not let off on this Bill Cosby, this, Bill Cosby, that. He's a patriarch and all kind of nonsense and everything. But now he's on here talking about uh, uh, Lil Wayne. Let's talk about T.I. too. T.I., people don't realize this. Remember when T.I. got into that beef where I guess it was his crew was, uh, well, was battling a ludicrous crew? And they all show this idiot showed up with guns and everything that kind of that thing. And he's like, Yo, we're gonna handle our business and everything. And it was a nice little shootout, whatever, like that. T.I. was facing 30 years in jail, right? I remember he was under house arrest, right? And he was like, Yo, too much is given, much is required. And he's no, basically no, 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 that, that was for the gun charges. No, that's for the gun charges, yeah. yeah, the gun charges, right? Yeah, I don't think it had, I don't think, had, I don't think he had a beef with Ludacris. That was the no, the, but it was, at his, it was at the concert, it was like, but he was caught with guns. It was at, at a concert, house, you know, at his house, I think. No, no, it was at a, it was after a concert. It was in a parking lot, you know. It was at a parking lot, as I recall. You know what I'm saying? It was some beef with, between his boys and some of Ludacris people, something like that, you know. Anyway, but the bottom line is this: Ti was <coughs> facing 30 years. How did he get off? He talked. You know, he talked. He talked. He snitched. He snitched. They said these, these gangster rappers are always talk about don't snitch. Ti snitched. You know. You know, and then his wife went out there and was messing with fucking Floyd Mayweather. So, and then T.I., I don't know if you're going to go see this, Dynasty, right? He made a trap museum. No, I'm not going to see that shit. It, check it out. Inside a trap museum, get this, is a, what you call it, is a scale. exhibit with Gucci with bricks of cocaine and major bricks of cocaine and everything. Right. And I was so disappointed that Jay Morris was in there, you know? Trap museum, a trap museum. But this, oh. is, this is what I understand. Like they just cannot let that shit go. That's like and me. I don't. I don't understand it. I don't you know, know if somebody you know, me that. back back in college when I was running white hoes. You know, I do a, 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 a me OJ Simpson. You know, we do a, a ex running back white hole chasing uh, convention um, right. museum situation. Like you know, Negroes. I, like I told you, Dennis. Some people don't want to uh, turn. A new life over, you know what I'm saying? I remember I, I met and, and think I backslid. I backslid. I was a naturalist when I was in my twenties. I was more militant than I am now, right? But by the time I was in my thirties, I was wild out there. I was out there while things happened to me. You know, I was attacked, almost killed one night, and all of a sudden I just lost all faith in all this. You know, I started studying martial arts and I started doing all stuff like this. But I gave up on all this stuff, man. I just hated the movement. Thought it was all hypocrite. It wasn't until uh, 2006, 12 years ago, 2006, when I got on the internet, right? And I started saying, uh, and I was battling, I was just going through so much in my life. I said, look, I got to return to what I know. I'm seeing, I, I, and, and what got me was every time I would see, this is this is what gets me, right? This, this is what gets me. I was seeing white people using the N-word, right? And uh, singing rap using the N-word, right? And black people are sitting there laughing like it was okay. I was seeing white guys, uh, black guys with white girls out there doing gang. I, I just saw the culture, right? And I just saw uh, nothing was real. And then Diddy had this thing. Remember he said that rock the boat? Remember that stupid shit he had in 2004? It was actually 2004. The, he said rock the, the boat. Vote or die, right? Or was it vote or die, right? Whatever like that. Vote or die, right? He had something before that, years before that. But the whole thing is, Diddy said, uh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the hip hop vote, right?" Mm -hmm. And the so-called hip hop vote is anybody who's not white male. I'm gonna get white females. I'm gonna get young people. I'm gonna get uh, LGBT, gays, blacks, Latinos, illegals, and we're all become and, and all the people who listen, listen to his music is gonna be one big voter block, right? But what he found out was that even people that he didn't notice. That people that uh, listen to his music also listen to Rush Limbaugh. You know that although they listen to his music, they still vote Republican. You know he didn't understand that 
white people separate your music from their politics. You know what I'm saying? You know, and so so he didn't understand that. And so I said to myself, I said, and so he said, yeah, well, I learned a lot about politics and everything. And I said to myself, uh, the hip hop vote, right? Think about it. We got reduced to a so-called hip hop vote, right? Mm -hmm. And then they kept pushing this whole thing about the so-called hip hop nation, right? And then I said to myself, there's only going to be one thing that's going to survive. The only thing that's going to survive is a colonization, nation, right? And I revamped the colonization. nation that was, it was a crew that we had back in the early 90s where I, Kala means tribe, means group, it means the keepers. You know, these are the people, we are the people that keep our people's heritage, culture, faith, and all the stuff like that, and purpose together, the Kala nation, right? And I became the Kala Genesis. And anyway, I said only Kala, and I started putting out blogs and everything like that, and I got such a big response. They're like, who the hell do you think you are? You know what I'm saying? All that black stuff died years ago or whatnot. Why don't you go back to the 1960s and whatnot, you know? You know, can you imagine why me, you know, being called a black extremist, black supremacist and all those guys? I said, no, I'm not doing that. I just believe that black is black, white is white, you know? We have an African roots and everything. We should be proud of our African heritage. I say hip hop has lost its, its faith, you know? You know, hip hop has lost its faith, you know? I believe that white people should not be using the N-word, you know what I'm saying? I believe that. And I started putting out stuff out there. And I had this one group, I forgot the name of it. There was this one rap group, right, that hated my guts. I forgot the name. They were actually pretty good. I forgot the name of the group, man, but they were actually really good. But they were after me, and they were like, man, we're going to come, man. We're going to expose you. You know what I'm saying? We're going to find out where you live at, blah, 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 all stuff like that. And it was, I was like, dude, man, it's not all that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, they were they were a mixed race group. You know, They were like they were black, white, and, and they, the whole band was like mixed race and all stuff like that. I said, I get it. You guys are trying to break down racial barriers and stuff like that. You think I'm a relic? You think I'm a thing? I said, well, look, you're going to find out in the future that this thing about race, you know what I'm saying, although it's been a race in the media, the hip-hop magazines, you guys got that on the thing. But we're going to use the internet to bring our so-called culture and race back, right? And was I right? Look at blog talk, look at uh, YouTube, everything like that. You don't have anybody talking about or oh, race doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? Do you see anybody? No. You know, you don't see anybody talking that stuff. Everybody's talking, everybody will admit now that color and race does exist. If you don't say that, then people are like, like you are a fool. And when I first came on, nobody would even admit they were black. There's no such thing as color. There's no, no such thing as race. Oh, yes, there is. You know? And so, so therefore, that's, that's how I think. Somebody said, this guy, color, can really talk. Oh yes, and I haven't done a show in like three weeks. I mm. think I, I think I'm owed a little talk time, you know. <laughs> but uh, that's 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 the that's the main thing. Uh, the point we're trying to trying to make here tonight is the fact that uh, the fact that race and color and all this stuff like that does exist. And like I said, and I, I my whole thing was when we first came on uh, when I first started getting blocked on radio, I said I want to do something different, right? I know that there's a lot of black people out there who are professional, who got good jobs and everything like that, but they're still black. Right? You know, you know, we know what we're doing, Kyla. We're making Africa attractive to the professionals. Right. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Because remember something, when I first came back on this, on the scene back in 2006 or whatnot, you know, uh, you have blacks without borders. That was a good boost. You know what I'm saying? You had people talking about, okay, yeah, this, that, you know, thing. And, and pan-Africanism was all but dead, you know? Then I came back on the scene, we started talking about this, we started talking about our history and stuff like that. And you know what helped us too? The Gina Six situation. Remember that, that situation? The Gina Six down in Louisiana? You know? Okay, the Gina Six situation, as I recall, it was like a, it was like a situation where, uh, where a white boy had put up a thing like they were lynching somebody. You know? You're mute, Dinos. No, I thought it was the, they were accused of rape, were they? So I, I can't remember, but but the bottom line is that was the first real black, that was a return to black activism. The Gina Six, everybody wore black. We had Gina Six uh, 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 situation here. Nationwide, everybody was wearing black and everything. And Michael Bazin's show was out, right? And we was like, okay, this, that, yeah, we're going to family. And also he had to blog, he had to, so the name group, I See Color, you know what I'm saying? 
and we were talking, and then all the stuff from Malcolm X and all these things start resurfacing again. You know, all, it had all had but died. You know what I'm saying? It had all but died. I, and I don't understand it because we had uh, 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 the Nation of Islam and everything. But the whole thing is, the whole thing is, the black middle America had divorced itself from the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Now what you had with the Gene 6 situation was mainstream black America start picking up the mantle of their struggle again. You know what I'm saying? It was a Gene 6 situation. I don't know. What else? Something else happened during that time period. But black, black people were starting to organize around being black. And it wasn't no rainbow, uh, I don't see color, and all stuff like that. It was an all black affair. You know, the Gene 6 situation. No, you it know, so no intersectionality and all rain, that stupid and stuff and whatnot. You know, intersectional rainbow. and yeah, all the stuff like this, you know. And uh, uh, what you call? So somebody said Michael Basin was that guy. Yeah, Michael Basin was the man, you know. You know Michael Basin was a uh, uh, the man. Yeah. So if anybody remembers Gina Six when I you remember those time period, right? That was a beautiful time period. That's why everybody felt like, oh man, we're unified again. We're people again. You know, that was a really good time period. You know. Yeah, and like I said, uh, we start challenging the use of the N-word and rap music, and we start challenging. Like I said, we started more conscious rappers start coming up. I remember when NY Oil was out, right? He had a song called "Y'all Should Be Lit." You ever heard that song? NY Oil, NY Oil. Nah, he's an that guy. That sounds like some underground uh, situation. Oh yeah, he's like his name is Kim Sharpton on Facebook. I think you're friends with him on Facebook. But he used to be, uh, he used to be with the rap group UMCs out of Staten Island. You know, but he had a, uh, a thing called NY Oil. You know, y'all should be lynched. Right? Look it up, man. That was a good song. Man. That was that was the underground song of 2006. You know what I'm saying? That was the underground. He basically called out 50 Cent. He called out Jim Jones. He called out all of you that faces. Called them all out. Said, y'all nothing but a bunch of coons, sambos, all that. And oh my God, man. You know, and I put out a couple blogs called The Neo Minstrel Age, you know? And we started basically just clowning these rappers. They started, they started cleaning this stuff up a little bit, you know. You know, yeah, I wish black people start using, stop using the N word. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I would. Somebody said, "Push yeah." Would black people stop using the N word because it's debasing and degrading? You know, Louis Ross said, "NYO was nice." Yeah, NYO was my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy right there. That's my brother with another mother, man. He's down. He's down in uh. In Georgia, he's living down in Augusta, Georgia, right now. He try, he does pickleball. He, he throws that pickleball game. You know, I don't know what pickleball is, but he, whatever it is, is big in that part of uh, South Carolina and Georgia, and that's what he's promoting right now. But uh, uh but his the song "Y'all Should Be Lynched" that was the that was the anthem of the, like the New York Black Nationalist movement. And so, therefore, like I said, morphed into long term neo Black nationalism is we want a nation state of all in Africa. But we also want, we believe we're a nation within a nation in America. We should build our community as a collective, as people, as stuff like that. No, we're responsible for each other in America. We're responsible for it. And bottom line is, people who talk about murdering other black people, people who talk about, hey, you are nothing but a race traitor. You know, you are nothing but a traitor. You talk about murdering other black people. You talk about killing black people. You talk about selling us drugs. You're talking about putting our sisters out there on the street, pimping our sisters. If you're showing up with our sisters with a leech around their neck, you are not my brother. You are my enemy. You know what I'm saying? And you pray, you just pray that we live in a country where I can't get away with doing what I want to do. You know, just pray, you, you be thankful for that. That's what you ought to, you ought to you know, think, thank America for. Because if we was in our own land, you Negroes would not last. You know what I'm saying? There would be nothing protecting you. And, 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 and Kyla, they, they know that. That's why they do everything. Well, of course they know, that. They, know that. they want things the way they are right here because they know they can get away with murder in America. You know? You know, they, they, they know they can get away with murder in America. They can get away with uh, misogynizing our women, abusing our women, sexualizing our children, you know what I'm saying? Selling the brothers drugs and, and uh, 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 breaking our brothers' spirits and whatnot. We have this thing where we got black men who like preying on other black men, breaking their spirits. You know, it's like we're animals, like we're in competition for for whatever crumbs is the white man leaves us and all kind of nonsense. But all that stuff is going to change. Kyle, I was going to say we got uh, we got about ten more minutes. 
Oh, no problem, no problem. I, know. I appreciate you letting me go this long. Oh, no, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> you know, I just got it. Uh, but yeah, but this is a good show. Oh, yeah, back. You know, yeah, brother, you know. I, I, think, I, I, think, I think we made our point. Yeah, we made our point. The bottom line is the new nationalist movement. If you, let me tell you something, join the Black African Infrastructure. I think we uh, we put the old URL up. It's B-I-O-Africstan with a K dot O-R-G. Africstan dot O-R-G. Or do you use the other one? B-A-I-O Africstan 5 dot new dot com. Join our social network. Be around black people or professionals who got uh, stuff going on. We're building we do conference calls every once a week or stuff like that. We're really doing a community meetup. We have a meetup coming in New York uh, on the 26th. We're taking a planned group trip to Rwanda next year. We'd like people to join us on that. You know what I'm saying? We're doing stuff like that. We're, we, if you don't want to have nothing, if you don't want nothing, you have to ask and demand. You know what I'm saying? We see a whole continent out there. I want to know. We say this is what we could do. This is what we could have. This is what we want. Tell me who the one, who's who who's gonna step up and tell us no. And when those who we identify the ones who say no, we're gonna say what what the heck are give you your right to say no. And if necessary, we're gonna take what we want. But the bottom line is this: we want what we want. We're global people. Black America is one of the most powerful groups of people on the planet Earth. You know what I'm saying we should not be sitting in America uh, getting our head beat in because these these weakling people called white Americans control the system. They're not stronger than us. They're not smarter than us. You know, I see it every day. Glad nobody can match Black America when it comes down. We can do anything, and that's because I believe in my people. I love my people. And I believe in my people. I know we can do anything, but we can, look. We have to basically don't be envious of each other. If a brother is smart and a sister is smart and they got merit and they got things, put that person in a leadership position. You know what I'm saying? Respect that person's leadership position. Respect the fact that that person and you love what you're trying to do and you're, you got the same end game that you're all going to benefit. You know what I'm saying? When he wins, you win. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop being jealous of the successful black people in our community. You know what I'm saying? We're going to need uh, millionaires and billionaires and investors and bankers and all these other people that can move and shake and do things like that. We need those black people. We got to make them feel that they're part of the, the nationalist movement too. We can't isolate everybody. That's why I don't like. I don't agree with socialism. Oh, we don't need socialism because of rich people. Bye, 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 bye. I don't give a damn. A person's rich. He's a billionaire. He's part of my nation. He could be a trillionaire for all I care. But he's part of what I am. You know what I'm saying? He's part of me. We're part of the same entity. You know. So I don't believe in classism. Classism and so, and all the stuff like that is something Europeans uh, created to keep uh, themselves fighting with each other. We don't have that, you know. So, so all these people are here. Let me see if I can get some couple of shouts before I end it. Thank you, thank you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Hojin K. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's your friend, Hojin K. That's your friend. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, what you call uh, political chick? I love female Malaysia. Yeah, Wanda. You can't say nothing about Paul Kagame because the majority, a good percentage, they have the largest number of females in parliament in any other country in the world. So you can't say that's a discrimination against women. You know, Ville South Tome. Yeah, Ville in South Tome is a beautiful island. And the island of South Tome was, uh, and uh, and I uh, think was once Fernando Po. And the history of Fernando Po is connected to Liberian history. Of the crew tribe that used to go migrate there, and then like uh, Fernando Po is now called Bioko, but that's beautiful islands and the thing. All a lot of islands are deserted because Spanish used to use that as trading posts and everything. Tremendous real estate opportunity. The whole African continent could be. I don't even want to talk about it. But you sit in America and everything. But we're gonna find our way how to build Africa. And, and the bottom line is all this nonsense that we go through. Unnecessary nonsense is going to disappear. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Danny Royal said, it'd be nice to meet you show. We talk about how we can help build that. We do that. Uh, uh, toast, me, streets, reality, a trap. Yep. Love the Lace 41. South Tommy is a perfect island. Special group of development. Uh, yeah, South Tommy is a beautiful country, island. I agree with you. Hey, Colin, we're going to have to. Uh, damn, this All is, right. I don't know what's wrong with this. Hold on one second. Let me. uh. This damn, this damn webcams have been just been acting up. 
Uh, but anyways, what I was gonna say, we're gonna have to do another show before I, uh, you know, I go to synagogue next week. So okay, well, I was Wednesday. You want to do a show Wednesday night? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. We need to do a show. Man, something's wrong. With my uh... hold on one second. Let me just unplug this. Something's wrong. With my uh... my uh... blur. My my little ca- my camera situation. I'm over. Yeah, if you, if you, but, if you no, 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 no. I, I leave. I leave Monday or next week to go to synagogue. Okay, unless you want to do a show on uh, either th- Wednesday, two days from now, or Saturday. You know, oh, that's, that's right. Today's Monday, right? It's Monday. Yeah. That's oh, okay. trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do another yeah, one. Yeah, I'm wondering what you talking about. Yeah, I'm like you said Wednesday. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Wednesday, or Thursday, Wednesday, or Thursday night, whatever is good for you, man. Yeah, yeah. Next Wednesday, week. Thursday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday night's good. We'll do. We'll be back here on Wednesday night. Same back time, same back channel. You know? Yeah, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to BIO. I put the name of the, I put the uh, site. Make sure I put it in the uh, chat room. Make sure you go to it. Make sure you go to make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure you go to search for who on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also go to Africa Personified on those same platforms. Thank you so much for joining us. Till next time. Christopher Bazin, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, I have not been to Ebo land, uh, Emmanuel, but I will soon. Till next time, family. Peace. Peace, brothers.